Welcome back to Cherish Children Ministries. I'm Dr. Rebecca. In honor of Learning Disabilities Awareness Month, I'm here to talk with you a little bit more about dyslexia. To keep up with all the workshops, webinars, and videos that we do, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. In this video, we're actually going to talk about your curriculum and what you can do with what you have right now in your own home where you don't have to buy anything else and some steps that you can help your struggling learner right now at home. And I'm going to go over with you a very special lesson plan that we have put together step-by-step -step for you. So stick around. If you'd like to join us for our free webinar, go ahead and click the link below and get signed up for that. So you get all kinds of helpful tools for your toolbox at home. So I get asked all the time, can you please just tell me which curriculum to use for my dyslexic learner? I have tried multiple curricula and nothing seems to be working. Those are the most common questions that we get here at Cherish Children Ministries from both homeschool moms and classroom teachers. So the Orton-Gillingham approach is by far the most famous and widely used curriculum for dyslexic learners. And I have a whole section on that in the Struggling Learner to Thriving Achiever course. What does this actually mean? The Orton Gillingham, yes, is the most famous approach, but your curriculum doesn't necessarily have to be Orton Gillingham branded. You see, you can use whatever you have in your own homeschool journey. The keys are these, structured learning, sequential skill introduction, cumulative lessons built up on each other, explicit instruction, multi-sensory opportunities, and systematic phonics are the key facets for the Orton-Gillingham approach to reading for our dyslexic kids. So what you need to know is that you do not necessarily need to invest in an all brand new curriculum. What you do need to do is to learn the components of effective strategies and use what you have. Because the fact of the matter is this, most curricula have some kind of phonics and sight words component already included in them so there is no need in reinventing the wheel. What you might want to do if your curriculum is not technically Orton-Gillingham based is to make sure that you are doing some multi-sensory sessions with your child. Now, these are action-oriented with auditory and visual and tactile and kinesthetic elements reinforcing each other for optimal learning. Teaching spelling simultaneously with reading is part of the Orton-Gillingham approach. And we have a let's talk about spelling included all in our course for you. And it's also over in our shop if you want to grab that as well. So the OG approach basically revolves around the idea idea that kids learn and master language through three neurological pathways. Those three pathways are visual processing, auditory processing, and tactile processing. Now the first two, visual and auditory, are referenced when referring to reading, while tactile processing is referenced when referring to handwriting and muscle movements. So hundreds of curricula have been developed which encompass and embrace this approach. Now when all three pathways, visual, auditory, and tactile kinesthetic or incorporated with reading, language, and phonics, then the OG approach is the basis. Now keep in mind, all curricula may not quote, advertise this method is what is being used, but rest assured, if these three pathways are being incorporated in a structured and meaningful way and included in some kind of systematic phonics and multi-sensory opportunities, then the curricula is actually based off of the OG method. So now I spent some time explaining this because I get asked this all the time. Do you use the OG approach? And while the answer is an overarching yes, the OG approach is so very well known, at least some portions of the approach can be found in curriculum of your choice without you having to go out and spend hundreds of more dollars. First thing that we need to do with our little dyslexic learners is to get that left portion of the brain fired up so it is able to recognize and learn some patterns 
and reading type skills. And if you haven't watched in my other videos or if you're not in the class, then you go ahead and you will learn that the word form area is actually found in the left occipital temporal. And we talk all about primitive reflexes and how to get those integrated because those are found at the base of the brainstem. And in order for the higher level learning like reading and comprehension to happen, we actually have to get the primitives integrated so that that higher learning can occur. So our dyslexic kids are most generally heavier, a little bit on the right brain, that's where the comprehension area is found, and the left brain is a bit weaker. And so that's what we try to transform, that's what we try to strengthen through a series of systematic strategies. I would like for you just to imagine for just a moment your brain right now and how it actually receives information. Here's what happens. The first thing that the brain does, it actually takes that image that it sees from both of your eyes and it sees it upside down. Then the brain actually flips the image, turns it where you can see it. So imagine that extraordinary process that happens in just less than a second. Imagine if there is a delay in the right or the left brain here. You can see, you can imagine the frustration and delay of these precious learners. Oftentimes, these kids are gonna struggle with pencil grip, like just tracing letters with early childhood games. When this occurs, it's quite possible that the palmar primitive reflex is not integrated. And I do a whole nother video on the palmar primitive reflex, so go check it out as well. It is very easy to integrate. Now doing this a few times each day is going to help dramatically with the little learners who have dysgraphia. Additionally, we've developed what is called the Writing 8 ABCs exercise. And this little exercise is going to help with dysgraphia as well as dyslexia. We've also put together a four-part lesson plan, and this is a sure way to get your learner thriving. One thing that I want you to know is this. Here at Cherish Children Ministries, it is not a one and done fix all kind of approach. This is definitely a lifestyle change. This is definitely a healthy change because we look at diet, we look at nutrition, we look at all of the primitive reflexes, we look at auditory processing, we look at the visual function, all of the different functions. We don't just say, do these exercises, now you're done, now you're fixed and you're ready to go. No, here's what happens is we try to put the tools into your tool belt so that you have them ready to pull out at any time that you need them. Because you see, the brain is always changing. The brain is growing. So what happens is when we get the brain finally balanced and in sync and talking together again, whenever we are on a growth spurt, of course, the brain is going to grow as well. Now, this past summer, our dyslexic actually struggled with a little bit of a stutter, and he actually had the confidence to come to us and say, hey, you know, I find myself stuttering. He was actually able to process what was happening and then communicate that. So that, in and of itself, is huge for our dyslexic. So while he did have a stutter, the stutter lasted for only a few days, and here's why. I knew exactly what to do, even through all of my coursework and my undergraduate and my specialist program and my doctorate program, the continuing education has helped me put more tools into my tool belt so that I'm not completely stressed and worried whenever we run into an obstacle. Whenever we have an issue, I know exactly where to go. I know, ex I know exactly what tool to pull out and how to get him ready for learning and to help him with whatever the struggle is. So all that we did is I pulled out the Rocket Dog Brain Balance Exercises and we did some of those. Now I know exactly, because we've done all of our assessments with him, I know exactly where he is weak and what areas he is weak in. Now I know next time, whenever we run into a struggle, which I know we will, so I know that we will have more struggles along the way, I know not to stress about it because I have the tools ready to go for when that happens. And so if you haven't gone through the cherished program and the struggling learner to thriving achiever, I would encourage you to do that so that you can collect all of those assessments and know exactly where your learner is. It is a very comprehensive program and there's all kinds of information that is dropped into there. Now, one of the other things that we like to talk about whenever we talk about our dyslexic learners is the visual function. Visual function is of utmost importance when we talk about our dyslexic learners. 
Dyslexic kids struggle with visual recognition of visual elements and shapes and patterns. And we do these exercises with our kids to help them strengthen the weakness. Now, when we assess our children in this area, we ask our students to trace or rewrite a shape, just like we have right here in our rocket dog exercise. You can see we have a box or a circle a star or some type of a polygon only to find that our kids will draw something that looks a lot different from the shape that we have set before them. Sometimes they might not even close the shape. Now for something that might seem so simple, one can see how this impacts these precious kids' reading skills. Fixation is another component that is very important for parents and teachers to understand in our dyslexic learners. Fixation is simply the ability to maintain a gaze on a single location. But here's what happens in our dyslexic kids is the fixation will be slightly different from the point to which the child is supposed to be looking and then they have the inability to fixate. Smooth pursuit or slow tracking is another skill that's very complex for our dyslexic learners. Now, when we check our kids to understand the eye's ability to track, we understand why it is so difficult for them to read smoothly. This is actually a higher function of the brain. Some kids' eyes skip, and they also skip letters and words while they are reading. I want you to notice how the arrows indicate how the dyslexic reader may read, Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet. And then you can see how the non-dyslexic reader can read the same sentence. You can see how this might make it very difficult for these kids to read smoothly as their little eyes skip or jump letters. The brain takes the image that the eye lands on and the brain cannot do this properly if the eyes are skipping or jumping. So here's some interesting evidence. It used to be thought that what you were born with was all that you had. Oftentimes, brain development is thought of as putting as many things into the brain as possible beginning at birth. So babies, when they're born, they have about 100 billion brain cells. As the baby grows, the brain cells, they're called neurons, they grow larger and stronger, they form tentacle like branches in order to connect and communicate with other neurons and set the stage for how we survive and thrive in our life. Our ability to rationalize and to sense the words about us, express emotion and listen and communicate and learn. This is the true essence of brain development. Findings indicated those with dyslexia had disconnectivity between the areas of the brain that are responsible for speech production. Some research concluded intensive improvement reading instruction, which is what we're talking about with our lesson plan. It improved the skills in our younger kids with dyslexia and caused the brain to physically rewire itself, thus creating new white matter which improved communication within the brain itself. It was found brain imaging of children between the ages of eight and 10 displayed the quality of white matter, which is the tissue that transports signals in between the area of the brain processing centers improved significantly after 100 hours of remediation. That's not that many, so we can do this. Kids with dyslexia have what is called an auditory processing deficit, especially in phonics. And so we at Cherish Children Ministries have put together the Rocket Dog Auditory Processing and Sound Discrimination Exercises and Activities for you. So you can rewire your brain. Be encouraged. We want you to always do what is best for your child or your students. You are the ones who are with your children more than anyone. So just listen to your instincts and go to a specialist if you determine further modification and testing is needed. It is always a good idea to invite trained professionals onto the team for your child. You are your child's best advocate. Hang in there, have fun while doing the exercise. Let's embrace these cherished and brilliant struggling learners, these dyslexic kids, and let's equip them with what they need for success. Hang in there and have fun while doing all of the exercises. Let's go over the lesson plan. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over the Cherished Learner Daily Lesson Plan. Before you begin, something that I want you to know is that the Cherished Learner Daily Lesson Plan is found over in 
the full course Struggling Learner to Thriving Achiever. But I want you to know who it is for. This lesson plan is for students who have already integrated all the primitive reflexes. If you haven't assessed your child for the primitive reflexes, I would encourage you to go and check out the YouTube videos on that. If you are already inside the course, go ahead and go through that module. Now, if your child has not integrated the primitive reflexes, we need to go ahead and do that. And again, again, if you go over to YouTube, just go ahead and subscribe to the channel, see how to get your child's primitive reflexes integrated. The second thing that needs to have already happened before you start this lesson plan is to make sure that you have done all the assessments. So if you haven't done all of the assessments on your child to see if they are right brain or left brain weak, then you need to go ahead and do that. And if you need those assessments, then you can click the link below and you will get those. Go ahead and subscribe to the mini video series and you'll get everything you need for that. So this is a step-by-step -step plan specifically designed for kiddos who struggle with reading. These students are typically strong in comprehension, which would be the right brain, and then weak in fluency, decoding, and phonics, which are all left brain. Each component of remedial instruction is going to be identified along with the actions to remedy reading for the struggling learner. Remember, commitment and consistency are absolutely key components for a success. I cannot say that enough. Giving at least four days every single week will encompass each component. It's very important to include a word recognition placement assessment once a quarter. And then also, I like to incorporate Let's Go Learn in computer format if your child prefers that. So what should you expect? We get questions all the time. How long will it take to see results? First of all, you need to remember, first and foremost, consistency is absolutely key. It is a lifestyle change. Okay, so let's be realistic. If you start the Cherish Learn a Daily Lesson Plan with Rocket Dog in September or October, and you're faithful in doing it every single day, at least four days a week, then you should be seeing results by Christmas. You should notice significant improvement in word recognition with your child, as well as in reading every day. Every component for remediation is included, so it's very important to do every step. Do not become discouraged. I can't say that enough. Do not become discouraged because there will be days when you feel discouraged. First thing that we're going to start out with are the writing eight ABCs and the crossover and rhythm exercises with Rocket Dog. You can just start this with a blank sheet of paper. You can fold that piece of paper uh, it's going to be a regular computer piece of paper and fold it landscape direction. You're going to fold it in half, just draw a line down the middle. You're going to ask the child to trace a figure eight lazily, holding a crown or a pencil loosely in their hand just a few times, just like the figure eight and beyond exercise It's in that is found in the crossover and rhythm with Rocket Dog. You're going to ask the child to write the alphabet in lowercase letters using the midline of the paper for every letter. So I'm going to show you a video on how to do that. You'll do this every day with your child. You're going to do the entire alphabet while the parent or the teacher monitors. Now, to be honest, some kids might not be able to do the entire alphabet at first, and that is okay. Just have the child do as many letters as they can. There are many reasons to do this exercise. It's going to help with transferring the process of writing from the left hemisphere of the brain to the right hemisphere of the brain. And when this transpires, the process of writing will be greatly improved. This is also going to help with your kiddos who have dysgraphia. It's going to also help eliminate reversals whenever your kiddos are writing. Remember, consistency is absolutely key. Facilitating this exercise with your struggling learner is going to reap the most benefit whenever we actually do it on a daily basis. Whenever the exercise becomes easy for your kiddo, you might go ahead and retire it to your files of struggling learner to thriving achiever, but be sure to keep it archived because you might need it once again as that brain begins to grow and change. You're going to spend about 45 minutes each day, at least four times a week, and these are the components that you're going to be doing with your child. The first thing you're going to do are the brain integration exercises. You're going to do those four days a week. Of course, those are the rocket dog brain exercises. You can find those on their website. 
And then you're also going to do, the second thing you're going to do is decoding practice. And you're going to use whatever curriculum that you have. Do not go out and buy something special. Now we here at Cherish Children Ministries like to use curriculum that has bright colors and vivid pictures. The third thing we're going to do is we're going to do right brain sight word practice. We like to use Biffy tunes because they also have music that goes with it. But we also use the Orton Gillingham cards and you can use the red cards. You can use whatever you need to use. Whatever curriculum that you have purchased is going to have some type of sight words with it. You can make them. You can make homemade flashcards. Just get some 3 by 5 index cards and make them on the index cards. Go through the sight words and just put the sight words on index cards. The fourth step in this plan is pre-reading. And finally, the fifth step is going to be oral reading. So daily lesson plan part one is going to take about five to ten minutes a day. You are going to need the crossover and rhythm exercises of your choice. We pick Rocket Dog, of course, the Writing 8 ABCs worksheet, and then also the directionality exercises with Rocket Dog. You can grab the Writing 8 ABCs exercise for free. Just click in the description below and you'll see that. You're also going to use an arrows exercises, which is found in the vision and directionality exercises with Rocket Dog. And this is because we want to stimulate the connection between the right and left hemispheres. The exercises need to be done before you actually begin the reading portion of the lesson. So this is pre-reading. You're going to begin the day with crossover and rhythm exercises with Rocket Dog, the figure eight and beyond exercises, as well as the writing eight ABCs. So what you're going to do in those exercises is, if you don't know what the figure eight and beyond exercises are with Rocket Dog, it's basically crossing the midline. So anything you can do to cross the midline. If you are already in Struggling Learner to Thriving Achiever, you're going to remember to follow the directions on the Rocket Dog exercises. Remember, it's really important to stimulate the proper side of the brain. If you're watching this video, it's most likely that your child does have a weaker left hemisphere, but we want to double check just to make sure. So if you aren't for sure, it's very important that you figure that out first because the exercises are very specific in some ways. Some exercises are more specific for left side stimulation, while others are more specific for right side stimulation. Lesson plan part two. This is going to take about 15 to 20 minutes depending on the age of your child and we're going to set a timer here. The materials that you are going to need are your phonics cards of choice, whichever ones have come with your curriculum, a word list of your choice, use whatever you have, and a timer. You're going to follow the curriculum you have. It's probably more than likely some kind of an Orton Gillingham based product. As long as it has brain phonics cards, go ahead and use those. Use what you have. The point here is that we want our kids to decode using special sounds. You're going to ask your student to sound it out. They're going to put the color and the picture to memory. You can always make your own special sounds cards. You do not have to buy these. As you can see here, this special sound is or like in morning. And what we have done is we have taken some Legos and we have taken some little animals and we have coded our special sounds. So the letter M is on a yellow Lego and he says M. Mm. And this special sound card is or like in morning. And so we have put the or on a little animal. He's a dog. And then we have our in sound. And then we have ing is another special sound. And so our little learners can say m or n ing morning because they know their special sounds. Remember, it's very important that we have visuals for our dyslexic learners. It's important also for you to know that whenever your child sounds out a word incorrectly, and it is most likely they probably will at some point, when this happens, just go ahead and smile and give encouraging words, but try really hard not to give the answer, okay? You could say something like, hmm, maybe, what else do you think it could be? And then what you'll do is you will go ahead, if the, if the child cannot figure out the word, you're going to put the phonics card or cards in front of the child so that it will help spark the memory so that they can remember what the special sound was. If you must help after this process, it's okay to do that. Another option is that you can go ahead and write the word in large letters and use really bright colors for the difficult portion of the word, specifically for learners' needs. For example, Let's say that the word is neighbor. That's a very difficult word. It's actually on the second grade word list. 
You're simply going to use a marker and you're going to write the word on an index card. If the student is struggling with the special sound E-I-G-H, says the long A, like in neighbor, you're going to write the word neighbor with a lowercase n, and then you're going to have a capitalized E-I-G-H in bright colors, and you can decorate those colors or have your child do it. Just make sure they're vivid where the child can see that special sound so that the child has more of a visual for the right brain. When a student attempts to guess a word, we're going to encourage clapping syllables and underlining the root word if there is a root word and color coding or circling those special sounds. Now, for the word neighbor, there are two special sounds. A says A and or says or, like in morning. And we have both of those special sound cards. So we call this chunking words. When we break the words into syllables, we might say nay, that is one chunk. And then when we say bore, that's the second syllable or chunk. Finally, we're going to put it all together for the word neighbor. You might need to remind your student of some special sounds and some simple rules, such as I before E except after C. You will find some of these exercises in the brain exercises with Rocket Dog if you need them. They're in the back portion of the book, so when students struggle with blends in particular, for example, gla like glue or pla like plane, then you just have the student begin with the end of the word first so that the child can see it. We also use Let's Talk About Spelling for these kinds of struggles as the activities are more visual. And you're going to see some of those in the next slides. So the point is to just teach a few at a time. Repetition is very, very important and getting the brain activated is essential. Our kinesthetic learners might need to jump rope the words or hand clap the words or we like to do the hand tap too. So if the sight word, for example, is both, we can say B-O-T-H, both. I also like to make sure that we get as many senses engaged as possible, which is why we really like the tune portion of it, as well as making sure that we're getting the sensory motor. So I like to have our students use something like writing their words in beans or flour or something where they can actually feel. We could have our learners go outside and shout our words out loud while we're swinging or jumping on the trampoline or bouncing a ball. The picture cards are put to memory. Typically, just about five words a week is just right. And then we review all of the previously introduced words weekly so that they're put to memory with the pictures and the letters together. So don't stress about what sight words you're using. You most likely have some kind of Orton-Gillingham-based sight words. If you are unsure, use the sight words you have with your curriculum and then write them on index cards in very bright and bold letters and you'll make sure that you have those. You can go ahead and get the OG red words if you would rather, but most likely you have plenty of sight words already at your fingertips. Okay, daily lesson plan part four is going to take just about five to 10 minutes. Usually it won't take 10 minutes. You're just going to need the poetry book of your choice and a mirror. There are many, many ways to incorporate pre-reading, but we really like to incorporate poetry so that we can increase confidence in our children and their speaking skills. Posture and voice control, Letters and sounds, fluency and rhythm are all incorporated when we read aloud a poem. We usually stand in front of a big mirror, if at all possible. It's not essential, but it is fun for younger students especially. And the first step is to introduce the poem. Again, use what you have. You do not have to have a poetry book. You could even just use a passage from one of the readers that you're already using. When teaching this, students will not know all of the words in the poem at first, and that is okay. This builds confidence in a great and mighty way. We have our students stand up and use super student posture one, two, and this just means to simply stand straight. Their books are not held in front of their face or down below their waist. They're not leaning. They're standing straight and tall with their books in front of them. They have good posture. The voice box is open. And then we, as parents and teachers, read aloud the poem at least two times asking the student to simply follow along with us, maybe just with their eyes or their finger on their books or just quietly to themselves, feeling free to join in whenever they feel comfortable. Now, usually students will not join in at all on the first day or even the second day, but by the third day, the words and the rhyme are more familiar and the students will join in. This is a piece that we will practice over and over until it is actually memorized, but the point really isn't memorizing it. They just naturally do that. We're really working on fluency, 
rhythm, speech, and most of all, confidence. There are usually some unfamiliar words in the poem. Those will be identified. We'll go over those words first with our students, and then we'll identify the difficult words with the student and use the strategies that we discussed earlier, like circling the special sounds and writing in different colors and so on. We usually keep the high-frequency word list near the child so that they are available when needed. Okay, finally, lesson plan part five. This will take about 15 minutes or just the length of your story. You'll need your reader of choice. We like to use learning dynamics readers, but you can use whatever you like to use. Due to the typical auditory processing delay in most of these students, learning sight words can be extremely difficult. And this is the rationale behind using the learning dynamics readers because they focus on one letter sound at a time and they have minimal sight words. Most of them are OG based. If you do not have some kind of OG based reader, it is encouraged. Sight words can be difficult for these students, which is why we want to choose readers with as few sight words as possible we do not want our struggling readers sounding out sight words as this can become absolutely exhausting. The goal is just to promote success and confidence. Once each week, we're going to set a timer for about 25 minutes and go through the Rocket Dog exercises books doing as many exercises as you can with your kiddos. So this is where we have the sound discrimination and the auditory processing, the sensory motor, and the brain exercises here. There are more over in the shop, but these are the ones that you would like to do on the fifth day. And it's going to take about 25 minutes. Just go through as many as you can. These are really fun, and you can do these with your learner. I usually like to do them with our children. You want to make sure that you follow the directions for exercising the right side of the brain. If you're watching this video, my assumption is that your child has a left brain weakness. So it's important to do the crossover and rhythm exercises and the writing eight ABCs at least four days a week. But then these other ones you're going to incorporate on the fifth day or whatever day that you are not doing the lesson plan components. You are going to want to make sure that you do a word recognition assessment about once a quarter so that we can help determine what our student's current level of reading is. I also like to use Let's Go Learn, but there is a download for the word recognition assessment if you would like that. We use a variety of products, but we strive to find the features that are for the right brain learners, like bright colors and pictures. We just want to keep in mind whenever we conduct this quick assessment, you're not really assessing for comprehension or fluency. You're just really trying to do a quick track of progress to see how the student is progressing. You will want to give the assessment about once a quarter after you've started incorporating the daily reading lesson plan. It's an oral assessment. You're simply going to have the student read aloud the list of words. And then whenever the student needs to sound out a word, that's okay. Words read aloud could be slow but accurate, and that's okay too. You're going to take just a few anecdotal notes, which is where you're just going to mark a few details with the date and the words that took longer to sound out than others. So I might just make a little note to come back to those words with the student for next quarter. Just a couple tips. Tip number one, do not tell the student the word. You're going to want to because it's really easy to do that, but we want to make sure the student's working it out independently. Just make sure that they're not stumbled on it for too long. Go ahead and have them move on down the list. And then tip number two, self-corrections are not going to be marked as errors. They actually got it correct. Even if they said an incorrect word the first time, you're going to go ahead and say they got it correct if they did self-correct it without any intervention. Okay, so I just want to talk about spelling for just a little bit here. I want to give you a few tips. Right brain spelling with rocket. So from the most commonly used word list, you're just going to give your kiddo a little assessment using that and see which ones that they missed. And after you determine which words they spelled incorrectly, you're just going to have the student write the word on a three by five index card and just really mark it up and make it really big and bright and bold. And so if the word was animal and the student spelled it animal with an O, um, you're just going to change it to the A and have the student really, really focus on the A, the, the letter that they missed, and just make sure that they are getting that visual where the A is. I like to make sure that my students see the word. So again, I might actually tap this word. I might say A-N-I-M-A-L, animal. Again, I might even have the student write the word in flour or some beans, something where they can actually feel it. And this is how we um, mark our letters. We have the consonants, and then we have the vowels. 
and then we also have y is also a vowel. So we have y twice. We have y in the orange and y in the blue. Another fun trick is to get some little animals and cut small sticky notes into squares. If the word has a special sound like ch or sh or ay, or a blend like FL or SPL, just write those special sounds in a fun color or use a Lego or animal to signify those special sounds. You can see some pictures here with our learners. Um, these are some fun things you can just grab. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link in the description box. You can just grab them off of Amazon. They're little pop-ups and um, our students really, really like to use these for their sight words and their spelling words. It's a lot of fun. Right brain teaching strategies are helpful for kiddos who have underdeveloped memory strategies like spelling and math facts and rules. Also for kiddos who have an auditory processing disorder, as well as kiddos who have difficulty reading and remembering phonics, and also remembering sight words. They just can't remember phonics or sight words. And then these kids also dislike school no matter how fun the curriculum might be. So these are really good for all ages, young learners and teen learners. Right brain exercises are fun and they help encourage kids with this particular kind of struggle because this is a side of the brain in which they're already strong. This also helps with confidence building, which you've seen earlier in the video that confidence is so important. Right brain activities are absolutely the way to go. And remember, I teach classes on all of this, so if you wanna sign up for a webinar, go ahead and click the link below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Make sure you watch for more videos for your struggling learner to get thriving today. Thank you for watching. Thank you.